Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.6 Beta 1 released to developers today on all iOS 16 supported devices. While iOS 16.5 Beta 1 is out to developers, it should be out soon to public beta testers. However, we don't typically have updates on Friday, so it could be later next week at some point. Now this particular update released alongside a bunch of other updates such as iPadOS 16.6 Beta 1, WatchOS 9.6 Beta 1, and a bunch of others as well. And this came in at a very large 5.44 gigabytes on my 14 Pro Max. Anytime you go from a public version to a beta or from a regular beta back to the public version, it reinstalls the OS, so it's going to be a large update usually five or six gigabytes or so. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 20G5026E. This particular update brings a couple small changes and some things I think we're waiting for in the future. However, the first thing is there is a modem update coming from iOS 16.5 to iOS 16.6. It bumps up to version 1.80.00, at least on the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Hopefully that means some changes with connectivity, maybe more reliability, but we don't know until we use it for a few days. As far as new features, well, the first one is contact key verification. While we can't typically see that just yet, if we go into our settings and then we go back and search for it, we go to contact key you'll see it's there at the top. If we tap on it, it actually brings us into our iCloud settings with our Apple ID. However, there's not an option for it, but what this should allow you to do, and Apple already announced this, is if we go to their announcement, you can see if we scroll down, it says iMessage contact key verification. And you'll see here, it says, now with iMessage contact key verification, users who face extraordinary digital threats, such as journalists, human rights activists, and members of government can choose to further verify that they are messaging only with the people they intend. The vast majority of users will never use this, but you'll have the option to turn this on similar to what you have with lockdown mode on your iPhone. So if we go into messages, you'll see I was testing this back and forth with Miguel from iDevice help to see if we could get the verification to work. We didn't actually see it and it didn't show up as active. So we've been testing it to see if it was there and it doesn't seem like it's active yet, but the option is there if you search for it. Otherwise you can't activate it. But if you find a way to activate it, let me know in the the comments below. Now, as far as other changes and updates, it doesn't seem to be any physical changes. However, there is some good news here as this seems to be super fast. In fact, some of the animations may have changed. Everything seems to be really quick, even unlocking the phone. So if we swipe up, it seems to be very fast on the iPhone and the iPad. I noticed it right away on the iPad at how fast it actually unlocks using Face ID. They've changed something. I had one person say to me, Brom from Supercharged actually said that it felt as fast as iOS 12 to him. I've had quite a few people already tell me it feels super quick. So I don't know if they've actually changed the overall animations. They've just sped everything up in general, but it's really quick overall. Now, as far as anything else new, well, chat GPT is now here, but this is only available in the U S it seems. And also Apple apparently has not allowed its employees to use it on their phones. That means to me that Apple's working on AI on their phones. However, I would not expect any major features with iOS 16.6, just like we had a few sparse ones with iOS 16.5 as iOS 17 is right around the corner. As far as bug fixes, well, we don't know of any specifically as Apple hasn't stated any. You'll see here, it just says the beta version of iOS 16.6 contains bug fixes and improvements. What those are, we don't know yet. And the reason I say that is the notification one is still there. So you'll see there, it just kind of jumps back and forth still. They haven't fixed that animation. I've suspected that maybe they're going to update notifications overall in iOS 17, but we're not sure yet. Also that issue I had with the health app still seems to be there. Under browse and medications, the log file crashes every single time when I tap on it. Maybe I just need to delete these as there's a bug that they can't fix this way and then it will work from here on out. As I'm hearing from many of you, this isn't an issue. So this was just a test medication I added and it crashes every time. So let me know if that's happening to you, but all of the other bugs seem to have gone away. As far as the release notes, well, if we go into the feedback app, wait for it to load at the time of this video, they haven't updated anything. And the other different updates that they've released, such as watch OS actually says there's no new release notes. So not a whole lot going on as far as them telling what's telling us what's actually in these.
Now, like I said, performance seems to be really good and let's test it out on the iPhone 11. I haven't opened anything on this device yet. So let's open music. Seems to load nice and fast. Let's go into a game, see how fast this loads or if it does at all, we'll give it just a second here, see what it does and see if it's any faster. But in general, the OS feels very fast now. So we'll go in, let's see, create, create. Let's just jump through this and see how fast it actually is. We'll see if it will create something very quickly. There we go. We're into the main screen and we'll wait for it to load here and see how long it takes. If it's fast, great. If not, well, maybe it's not as fast on all devices, but it seems to be moving along pretty quickly here. There we go. It's loading. It's generating the world taking just a second to load into that. And this app was not open. I opened it up from the start, just as you saw, and immediately it's pretty smooth. In fact, it's very smooth. So I suspect they did something with this update, but we don't know exactly what it is. As far as the overall heat of the device, one thing I was surprised about as more and more of you tell me about this, this actually was nice and cool, even right after installing the update. In fact, I can barely feel anything on the back at all. It's nice and cool to the touch, no issues there whatsoever. If we take a look with the thermal camera, you'll see with the thermal camera, it's not even 81 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just over 80 degrees. And as far as Celsius, I'm seeing 29.7 at the highest there. So it's staying nice and cool in general, much cooler than the previous versions, even after installing a pretty large update. Now, as far as battery life, it will take a few days to know that, but let's take a look at the battery, battery health and charging I'm at 97%. You can see how many cycles I have here on the left using coconut battery. And in general on 16.5, it was okay. I think it should get a little bit better. Hopefully it will, if they fix some issues with this update, but we'll have to give it a few days to measure it as you can't tell right away you need to give it a couple days for everything to process or be finished and kind of normalize but you'll see today i have two hours and 54 minutes of screen active time four hours and 23 minutes of screen idle time and i've used just under 50 percent of my battery so not really that great overall the day before i used 75 percent and only had about four hours of screen active time so it definitely could get better but many people report 16.5 as being quite good as far as if you should install iOS 16.6 beta one at this point, I would say there's not really a reason to do that unless you're testing software, you're a developer, or you just want to try it out. But at this point, I'd probably hold off to see how stable it is over the next few days for those of us that test it. And of course I'll have a follow up about it as soon as I can, after I have some good information about it. As far as when to expect the next version, well, iOS 16.6 beta two probably will not be out for another week or two at this point, I would not expect anything this coming week, but the week after that, I would expect it maybe before WWDC. Then on June 5th at WWDC 2023 is when we should have iOS 17. We'll get iOS 17 beta one typically for developers, and we should see a bunch of new features. Then of course that final release will be in September, usually before the iPhone 15 launch. So I'm looking forward to that. We're not going to see a ton of different feature updates with iOS 16 any longer. Usually we will have betas all the way up until September though with those. So we should see some bug fixes, security updates, and more. Now, as far as benchmarks, I did run those on my 14 pro max. So let's go into photos here. I saved it. And this is from today. I had 2,511 for single core, 6,182 for multi-core compared to before it's a little bit faster for multi-core. So 6,127 versus 6,182 single core is actually a little slower. 2,527 before 2,511 now. So it seems to be performing quite good. I don't know, like I said, if they sped up animations or what, but it definitely feels nice and fast. Things seem to load pretty quickly, even weather here and just going into different apps, switching out, opening, unlocking is just super fast this time around. Let me know your experience if you installed it in the comments below and if you found anything else. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.